Coming up, we're going inside the incident command post at the wildfire in Modoc County. You'll get a behind the scenes look at how overnight nearly 3,000 fire personnel are able to call this once empty field home. People are amazed at how fast we can mobilize. Plus, the heat and smoke from this fire so massive it created its own weather system. If you make a mistake on your interpretation of the weather or how it relates to the fire behavior, there can be some serious consequences to that. We're on location at the Modog July Complex Fire for this week's edition of Inside Look. July 24th, roughly 5 p.m., a lightning strike began a small fire in the massive National Forest in Modoc County. Within hours, the small fire grew to a large fire, and it was obvious that help, lots of help, would be needed. It's pretty fascinating stuff, and it, and it is. People are amazed at how fast we can mobilize. Within a few days, over 2,000 firefighters were on the fire. The trouble is there just isn't a lot of places in this rural county to put that many people. On the Modoc, there's not a lot of usable ground for camps because of the amount of volcanic rock, yeah. and uh, it's difficult to walk on. Just so you understand, none of this was here a week ago. This is basically just barren land that's owned by the U.S. Forest Service. But when the fire started, all of this was set up, and it has to support over 2,300 firefighters. That means feeding them three meals a day, places to shower and brush their teeth and shave every day, places to sleep every night. All of this had to come together basically overnight. And this thing will go up realistically from time on scene till probably within 24 hours or less, you'll have a fully functioning camp. You gotta go for life support first. And what I mean by that, you gotta get the crews fed, you gotta get them showered, you know, they gotta be able to sleep. This is rare behind the scenes video from the incident command post. Think of popping up a mobile city overnight generators for electricity, places to sleep. Most of the firefighters sleep in tents when they're not working. A fully stocked and staffed kitchen serving breakfast, lunch, and dinner every day to nearly 3,000. Cell phone towers, communication specialists, and lots of offices. All of the logistics and planning are being run out of this command post. Briefings and meetings are held several times a day. Pretty quiet all overall over the incident last night. There's also the creature comforts, several places just to shave and wash your hands with hot and cold running water. And some may say, well, why do you have so many shower contracts here? Well, it's so we can get these young kids embedded because that's a safety issue, that they get their sleep. Fatigue is one of the number one contributing factors to uh, injuries. For the firefighters, the work here is intense. The ambient temperatures are right around 100. Add to that your Nomex, helmet, gloves, and walking on ground that is still hot from the fire, and it's just brutal, which is why hydration is so important. Throughout the day, crews stop by to pick up cases and cases of Gatorade and water, and if you need ice for your ice chest, they have it. Just say how much. And inside all of these trailers is some sort of critical role in fighting this fire, including one that you may not suspect, weather. With more on that, here's Sean Boyd. Thanks, Brian. Since the beginning of humankind, if we wanted to see what the weather was doing, we'd simply step outside, take a look around, maybe put a finger to the wind. Well, they do that and a whole lot more out here, but there is one particular piece of weather phenomenon that has dominated the firefight out here. Crews mopping up inside the Cove fire are keenly aware their situation could change in an instant. A change in wind direction could put them back in the path of the wildfire. If you make a mistake on your interpretation of the weather or how it relates to the fire behavior, there can be some serious consequences to that. There's a reason Operations Section Chief Patrick Titus includes weather in his morning fire line updates. You got it tucked in. Tested, so. We had five days in a row of plume-dominated fire behavior, which is pretty unusual. This is a plume, a pyrocumulus cloud to be exact, and the weather it can create is the daily wild card in the Modoc July Complex firefighting strategy. The plume you guys saw was interesting. It was an island inside the, the fire, and it, I came in here and it was at 28,000 feet. And that day, actually, I was picking up small pine cones that were coming out of that plume. Pine cones and other flying cinders trigger spot fires outside the established fire lines. And that's exactly what you see happening here right now. 
After a wet winter, there's an abundance of dry, dead grass, along with juniper and pine just waiting to combust. It only takes one spark. So how does the pyrocumulus phenomenon form in the first place? So a pyrocumulus forms when you have unstable conditions up high in the atmosphere and a really hot fire. So you have strong updrafts, and as it reaches a certain level, there's enough moisture in the atmosphere where it kind of creates a cloud. Meteorologist Jimmy Tager is tasked with closely watching and analyzing the weather, including pyrocumulus-generated weather. They can impact a fire even as they collapse and die. So when the, a thunderstorm collapses or a pyrocumulus collapses, then you have winds kind of outflowing in all directions. And when you have different topography going on, the winds could be swirling in, in different ways to where it's going to totally change the fire behavior. Which is why crews like these keep one eye on the sky. And the forecast for today is not optimistic. Still high temperatures, low humidity, and high winds are expected as well. And that, of course, does not bode well for the fire or the firefighters. Out here at the Incident Command Post at the Modoc July Complex Fire. For Brian May, I'm Sean Boyd, and all of us here at OESnews.com. Thanks for watching. Visit our online newsroom at OESnews.com to learn more about this program and get the latest news and information from our team. Don't miss our next video on your Facebook timeline. Like our page and you'll get the latest posts as they happen. If you're an Instagram user, you can see the latest snapshots by following our Cal OES Instagram account. And Twitter users can get instant access to our tweets from across the state by following Cal OES.